Hello people and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to continue on my theme of talking about random things I find interesting and focus on zombies in this video, more specifically zombie films. Now why zombie films you may be asking? Well zombies kind of scare the shit out of me. So this has led to a weird obsession with watching zombie films in a hope to desensitize myself, which has not so far worked. However, I'm going to talk about five zombie films that I think are uh, a little bit obscure, a little bit weird, quite entertaining, and usually quite funny. And I'm going to give these in chronological order, basically because I think they all have their pros and cons, and I like them all for different reasons. So I think that's the least biased way to go through the list. I will also give a brief introduction of the film, uh, without hopefully spoiling too much and then talk about the things I find either most entertaining or disgusting or, you know, most unique uh, in the whole concept of the zombie film. So the first one I will talk about is Braindead. I've also seen the film referred to uh, on the internet as uh, Dead Alive, but I'm going to call it Braindead because that's how I've seen the film. And this film was made in New Zealand and released in 1992. It was written by Stephen Sinclair and was directed by Peter Jackson. So if you're at all interested in Peter Jackson and you haven't seen his early work and have a fascination with zombies as well, then this is a pretty cool movie to watch. So I'll just set the scene for you. Uh, the movie kind of starts out following this guy who's an explorer and he's trying to get this really weird, uh, rare specimen uh, called a Sumatran rat monkey. Now this particular uh, animal arose from an interspecies breeding of plague-infested rats with monkeys. Yeah, that should kind of set the tone for the film there. Yep. And they managed to get one a specimen and then transport it to Wellington Zoo, where, uh, where this whole story takes place. And then you've got, uh, well, you've got a couple of main characters, but the ones I'm going to talk about, which I think are the, the weirder ones, and I think the, the, the two main characters are uh, this guy Lionel and his really overbearing, uh, demanding mother, Vera. So this guy, this poor guy Lionel, he actually meets a girl that he likes and he asks her out on a date. And because his mother is this overbearing, horrible person, she follows them and they go to Wellington Zoo and, you know, things happen and she manages to get bitten by the rat monkey. So he then tries to protect her and help her and of course she becomes a zombie. Spoiler there a little bit. but. Uh, he then tries to hide her as a zombie and of course that doesn't work and then there's other zombies and yeah, that, I think that's all I should really say about the movie because any more would be giving away the story too much. But what I really liked and found extremely gross about this film, uh, there was one particular moment I found the most gross in the entire film for me, was the wound on Vera's arm that squirts pus into someone's dessert. Yeah, that was nasty. That was really, really fucking nasty. And then there is like zombies getting it on, a uh, zombie baby, and then uh, some really like outrageous, uh, gross zombie kind of puppetry. And yeah, it was just really gratuitous zombiness. And you know, the gore and the goo was really cool. And that's why I like this movie. It's just really gross and funny. And I think for that reason, extremely entertaining. The next one is also from New Zealand. It's uh, called Black Sheep and it was released in 2006. It was written and directed by Jonathan King. Uh, the film really starts with uh, these two brothers on, the, on their family farm. Uh, one, Angus, the older brother and the younger brother, Henry. And Angus is a real ass and he kills uh, Henry's pet sheep and Henry finds it and then uh, they're actually told at, around, at that moment that their father has died in an accident. So these two events uh, combine to horrifically traumatise Henry and leads to uh, him having a fear of sheep. Then you skip to 15 years in the future 
and Henry is travelling back to the family farm to sign over his half of the farm to Angus. But what he doesn't know is that Angus has been trying to develop the perfect sheep by performing genetic mutations on sheep. And it, you know, things happen and one of the mutant uh, reject sheep actually ends up being uh, released and it's this deformed lamb and it bites people and then they become zombie wear sheep. So zombie fucking wear sheep, come on, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> but it also uh, contaminates the sheep and then uh, they have to try and stop the zombie wear sheep. <laughs> That's probably the, the main reason I love this movie is zombie wear sheep. Then you've got these really, you know, boring, uh, innocuous herbivore sheep that become these ravenous murderers. Uh, and there's one scene, you know, where a sheep rips a guy's throat out and there's blood and gore going over and it's just fucking fantastic. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, and then there's this really strange part, you know, about the real love of sheep. Someone has a real love of sheep, not going to ruin it, you need to watch it for that reason. And there's also the, the gore is fantastic, so I very strongly recommend watching this if you're at all interested in the weird interpretation of uh, zombies. Yeah, it's really weird, <laughs> but fantastic. The next movie is a Norwegian film called uh, Dead Snow, and I don't think I'm going to pronounce this correctly, but how you would say it in Norwegian is Dead Snow. Uh, I could be totally wrong. My apologies to anyone who ever who watches this who is Norwegian. Yeah, my bad. Uh, and this movie was made in 2009. And because it is Norwegian, it does contain subtitles. I recommend watching it with the subtitles rather than uh, with it being dubbed into a specific language for the simple reason that you get more inflection and tone when you actually have the actors talking in their native language. Uh, it was directed by, and I really hope I get this right, Tommy uh, Workola. And it was written by Tommy Workola and Stigfrod Henriksen. I hope I said those right. I'm really sorry if I didn't. So, <laughs> the movie takes place, like, uh, I guess you could say the standard setup for horror movies for, with uh, people in their early 20s going off into a cabin in the woods. And uh, this being Norway, uh, of course the cabin is in the mountains and there's snow everywhere and they're going on a snow trip in spring. And then they get attacked by uh, zombie Nazis. I'm going to leave it there because that's all you need to know. They get attacked by fucking zombie Nazis. Uh, I just think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's just great. Uh, there are several really great moments in, in the film. There's one where a zombie reaches through and crushes a guy's skull and his brain just comes flying out. It was hilarious. There's also one really badass moment where a guy actually sews a bite shut, like he sews his wound. And I was just like, oh, holy shit. Uh, that was that was pretty epic and of course you know they just get chased by you know zombie Nazis so I don't think you need, really need to add much more to that it should be watched for that simple reason <laughs> the next one is probably the most popular out of the list I'm talking about uh, and I think really because you know it stars it stars some quite well-known people and it's called Warm Bodies. Now this is a US film, it was released in 2013, directed by Jonathan Levine, and the screenplay was also written by Jonathan Levine. However, it was based on a book by the same name, written by Isaac Marin. And the reason it's probably much more popular is it stars Nicholas Holt, Teresa Palmer, and John Malkovich. So it probably got a much broader audience because of the, the stars, within the film. Uh, however, I really liked it and I felt it should be included because it's one of the few films that actually does, does the movie from the zombies perspective. And I think it's, it's very easy to, you know, you have the really bad evil villain, uh, they just become one dimensional. So I really liked that this was uh, make, putting the zombies in the grey area <laughs> of not being entirely bad as we want to make them. They actually had more to them and that 
kind of redefine how you should see a zombie, I feel. Uh, the, and the story centers around R, uh, because he can't remember the rest of his name, who is a zombie, and how he falls for a girl called Julie. And it is like this really strange romance. You still have the bad guys, I have to say. Uh, there are even worse versions of the zombies. They kind of deteriorate into these creatures called bonies. And I won't say much more about the story because then it gives it away. It's enough to say it's a love story with zombies. And it's really from the perspective of the zombie. So I, I like that. There, <laughs> the things I loved, uh, it did have the classic shuffling zombies. It had um, just generally like the zombies were just dead looking. They, they didn't have any awful CGI like what they had with the bonies. Yeah, you need to ignore that because I think a really good horror movie, you shouldn't be relying on CGI for the scare. You should be relying on uh, just the, the fear you create in the film. So that's the one thing I don't like about this film is that they have this CGI scary things. But other than that, it's a fun film. I like the idea of like a zombie romance. So that was cool. The last movie is an Australian movie called Wormwood. And this film was released in 2014. It was directed by, by Kai Roche Turner. And it was written by, by Kai and Tristan Roche Turner. Now, I love this film. I think it is fucking brilliant. It is one of the best modern zombie films. And I just want to point out, they're Australian. They get the Australian accent. And how they speak is how Australians speak. So, yeah. Don't need to add much there. No one's actually putting on a fake accent. I really liked it. But the story really begins with these couple of guys talking about the start of the zombie apocalypse, which I don't think a lot of zombie movies really deal with, like, the very start. You usually get someone who wakes up and something's happened, but they are actually trying to explain how it happens, which I think is cool. But you have, like, this guy, Benny, and his brother's out in a camping trip, and then he wakes up and one of his brothers has been killed, the other's a zombie, and... Then you skip to this guy, Barry, and his family and how they wake up with a zombie in the kitchen. It's really about how they deal with the zombies, how they help uh, each other. It's, it's also, it's as much human as it is to do with dealing with the zombies. They also have to go help Barry's sister, Brooke. So that's all I'm going to say about the film. But things I really, really loved about this is it had great gore and makeup. Like, they really went back to... The, the real core of horror movies, where it's all about how you create the look. It's got, and uh, how, how realistic the, the terror they convey is. I really love that. And then they, there was also the, the settings, like how it would really look if there was a zombie attack, just suddenly, and also the dialogue, because it's really how Australians would talk and how they would react to that situation. And I just love fucking zombies. Uh, just how they said it. It was just that realization that holy shit, the world being overrun by fucking zombies. So that was just great. Uh, and that's it for that film. And the reason uh, I really love these films, all of them, is that they like are really unique in their storytelling. They give a new perspective of the zombie film. Uh, and like we all know, George A. Romero really redefined the whole kind of genre, zombie genre, uh, with Night of the Living Dead. I think in 1968, he really reinvigorated the, the whole concept of being scared by something that slowly it comes after you. But these stories kind of told a different perspective, most of the time funny, uh, but they, they did it uh, and if not funny, they did an inventive storytelling and the gore was amazing. Really ingenious kind of gore production and it was just great. So if you found this at all interesting, please like uh, and feel free to comment on any weird obscure zombie film that you've seen uh, because I'm always up for watching them in the hope that I do desensitize myself. Hasn't worked, you know, in the many years I've been doing it, so can only hope. And if you liked, please subscribe to my channel. I do intend to put out, put out videos on the random shit that I find interesting as often as I can. 
And finally, thanks for watching. Bye.